the five stages of recovery because around holidays, that's what happens. People get depressed, people want to drink, people want to do drugs, and then they end up back in prison. So, let's get it going. What's up? We're back again. I like saying that. Five stages of recovery. Happy holidays. I want to touch on some stuff today that around the holidays happens a lot. And as you guys know, this channel, Wrong to Strong, is about my life. Prison in Mexico, working for families over there prison in the United States, state and federal, addiction, and what I call this all around chaos in my life. And that's what I share with you guys. That's what I try to show you guys, you know, not to glorify anything I do, but as an educational purpose so people can learn from my mistakes. I am not a drill sergeant. I am your friend. And I'm just trying to share my story so you guys don't make the same mistakes that I made. Especially because it's around the holidays and this is the time where I used to use the most when I was an addict. Uh, I actually caught both of my DUIs around Christmas. Actually, I caught them on December 23rd or 24th. I can't, I'm not sure, but it was around Christmas. Um, I mean, there's a backstory to why... I used to take holidays so hard. They're still kind of hard on me. Christmas is pretty pretty hard on me. Um, some stuff that I did in my past around this time that kind of gets to me. And I uh, it's, it's taken a lot of work to kind of work through it. This year I'm doing something different. So, you know, um, there's five stages to, to the whole recovery process if you're, if you're an addict, you know. And we sit in this stage where... You know, it's we want to change our behavior, but we 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 really don't do nothing. Like we we think that we're okay, uh, and uh, it's it's called a stage with no intent to change. Uh, you know, behavior for the future. Um, it, it's it's a stage where we're, we're in denial almost, and. We, when we're asked like if we have a problem, we don't we don't think we have a problem, and and that's the biggest the biggest thing that you gotta get over over that first hurdle, and then you know the next one comes the uh, the contemplation where it's like <laughs> serious thought about you know do I really want to change? Is there something really wrong with me? And it's deep serious thoughts like the monks, the nuns, and like philosophers, but damn well, you know that you're a drug addict, so like, you know, um, and I went through all these stages, that's why like I'm able to laugh about it now, and you know, it's not a joking matter, it's not at all, but you know, I'm, I'm able to laugh about it now because, you know, I look at how I used to live back then, and how I live now, and it's like, I can't really even understand why I did some of the stuff that I did. And it was because of the addiction, you know, and it was because I used to think that there was nothing wrong with me. And it, it just, it blocks your mind from just normal thinking. And it, it's, it's crazy, you know. Um, and like I said, there's there's the five stages, and the next stage after that is the, it's a preparation stage where you want to start getting ready for like the purpose of what you're gonna do, and that's get sober. Um, it, 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 there's there's stages to it because if you I'm a big um, believer in the uh, twelve step program, you know. Um, my dad's been in the program for, I, I believe, 30 years. Um, and I've talked about it in the past, you know, when my dad first 
uh, got sober, um, he was uh, what we call a, a dry drunk, where he was sober, but he was still making a lot of mistakes um, that addicts make. And one was, you know, um, not being faithful, uh, uh, constantly jumping from woman to woman. And, you know, um, I've kind of fell into some of those uh, behaviors because of my addictions also and you know it's very very important that uh, you follow the plan and the steps the way it's supposed to if you actually want to get sober and stay sober because it's pre-contemplation contemplation preparation action and then the biggest one is maintenance uh, the maintenance and determination stages are the big ones because these are the ones that determine the path to recovery in, in your whole addiction. Um, these stages take like time, patience, and like ultimately like the, the work. But if you do it, you know, you end up having a, a normal life uh, free of, you know, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is that your addiction is because addiction, addiction can be so many things it, it could be alcohol drugs uh you know whether they're over the counter or illegal uh, uh porn sex money gambling it, it could be so many things like an addiction is an addiction that you can't and i'm gonna put up another video pretty much breaking it down more on what what it is um but the reason why I wanted to do this around this time was for that specific, uh, you know, uh, the holidays. Because, like I said, in my past, around Christmas, New Year's, was the biggest time that I would use. And it's most, most of my holidays were actually spent in prison. Um, it's crazy because I was looking at the times that I got released and I almost... All my all my stages of release almost came right after the holidays, and there was one time I got released right on December twenty fourth, and I came home to surprise my girlfriend at the time, and I got surprised because uh, she was there with somebody in her apartment. And, um, you know, we had been talking on the phone and we were going to like make things work. I was coming home and three months, but actually my good time kicked in because in Illinois, if it's uh, a nonviolent crime, you, if you get a year, you only do six months because those six months good time kick in. So my six months good time kicked in and I actually got released on December 24th. Well, I came home and knocked on the door i was really happy to like be home i was about to see my girlfriend and i opened up she opened up the door and she was like what are you doing here and i was like what are you talking about babe like i'm home you know we, we talked on the phone about how much you love me and how we're gonna like get married and do all this stuff and little to my surprise you know one of my uh <laughs> associates was uh sitting in the kitchen and she had been you know messing around with him through the whole time so you know uh, my first plan of action after that <laughs> was to go get high um i broke some laws and i was back in prison i say a week a week later and uh you know holidays holidays always bring up memories uh you know uh it brings up a lot of stuff that as human beings we we think about it and we dwell on on it and some not so good some good you know those that, that don't have their kids with them those that lost uh, loved ones around that time um so you know and being an addict i have to be very very careful about how i carry myself especially around this time and you know taking the plans of action that I need to do with my maintenance and you know hitting that meeting even though 
we think that we're okay already, that we don't need it. It's a lie that your brain just tells you because obviously doesn't want to be sitting in an hour meeting. But, you know, it helps me a lot to sit there and actually listen to stories of other addicts because at the end of the day, you walk out of there and you know what? There's always somebody, I hate to say it like this, but there's always somebody that has it worse than you. And it's almost like you're, you're not that fucked up. I, it sounds bad, but it is what it is. And it helps you stay on that road of maintenance and, and, and just, you know, staying clean. And it's just like the gym. You can't expect to go into the gym and be a power lifter from one day to another or be a bodybuilder and grow muscle from one day, one day to another. You actually have to put in the work. You have to put in the work to get the results, whether it's diet, cardio, lifting weights, wh whatever it is that your end goal is, you have to do the work. So if your end goal is to stay sober, you have to do the work. Get a sponsor, go to meetings, do the steps, read the fucking book. There is no easy way out. I am the poster child of trying the easy way out and it cost me 17 years of my life. So, with that being said, like I said, Ron Strong is a channel about addiction, PTSD, shit. It's about a lot of stuff. Fitness, changing your life. I could go on and on and on. But if you're my subscriber, make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss nothing that's coming up. And I'll catch you on the rebound.